ORR Bulldog Tiny Mites selected for USA Football Chuck Knoll Game for Life Award by Lance and Rebecca Davenport. Congratulations to the ORR Bulldogs Tiny Mite team on being selected to receive the Chuck Knoll USA Football Game for Life Award. This award was granted for embodying the heart of the game and exemplifying very important fundamentals of football. This Tiny Mite team has proven they honor the sport of football through commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence every day. This is the essay that was submitted. Good day. My name's Rebecca Davenport. I am a team mom for the Old Rochester Bulldog Tiny Mite team. My husband, Lance Davenport, is the assistant coach, and my son, Remington, who is five years old, is playing his first year in organized Tiny Mite football, and we love this football family. Football is not new to our family. My husband's been a quarterback since age seven, a coach at the high school level immediately following graduation, and was the head coach for Pop Warner Pee Wees for a different team for eight years prior to the birth of our son. My son has been tackling in our bedroom since he was two years old with his father, and other than taking sports photography as a hobby, which I've included some for cuteness. This was my first year directly involved with the players, teams, parents, coaching staff, and organization as a whole. I say this with a full heart. I am proud of our Bulldog Tiny Mite players, parents, coaches, and families. The Bulldog Tiny Mite team consists of 22 boys, ages five to seven years old, five coaches, two team moms, and 22 families who all serve the recognition for their commitment of the phenomenal sport of football. These parents are committed to not only transport their children to practice, but actually actively participate by watching, listening, reinforcing the skills and behaviors, fundamentals, and foundations we are building out on the field. Although we have lost two players during the season, one for a family medical and one decided football wasn't for him, they are still part of our football family off the field and remain football brothers to our tiny mites. I wish we could say that we have a 100% attendance rate, but that wouldn't be truthful. What's truthful is they are all excused absences. Sometimes practice doesn't coincide with parent-teacher conferences, external football family obligations, weddings, functions, church, and sickness. Our tiny mites show up ready for practice, put on their own equipment, Okay, maybe they need a little help with untied cleats and snapping chin straps. But they understand that practice is a time for exactly that, practicing. That means practicing listening to their coaches, learning fundamental skills of the game, executing proper form, understanding the differences between offense and defense, learning about what the responsibilities are of the different positions and how each position is part of the team and necessary for the success of the team as a whole. At this level, football is about skill development, building a strong foundation through fundamentals, and having fun while learning to play the game we all love, not about winning. We practice these fundamentals through repetition and reinforcement of what we believe to be the core values of the game. Commitment, integrity, courage, respect, excellence, and teamwork with a little bit of fun. These are not just fundamentals of football, they are valuable lessons on and off the football field. Success and development of a team begins with our coaching staff and it begins with a few key elements. This is what these key elements and fundamentals mean to our Tiny Mite players. B is for brotherhood. As a team mom, this is very important to me. Every player on this team understands that they are an equal part of the team. These are their football brothers. They will play the game they love together for the next 12 to 13 years, and they are all stars. The bond that's created through this game is like no other. These relationships extend way beyond the football field, and if nurtured, these relationships can last a lifetime. This also extends into the coaching staff, not just the players. Courage, or you. Football is the opportune time to teach courage. Our kids are ages five to seven and come in all shapes and sizes. Our smallest is 42 pounds and our biggest 74.5. We teach them to try their hardest even when they're afraid, 
even when they're smaller, even when they're unsure and have never done a skill before. Pick your chin up, take a breath, and say, I have courage. I am brave. Our kids actually chant between skills on the sidelines during a game. If we believe, we can achieve. To instill that, it's okay if we're afraid. What's important is that we believe we can do it and that we try even when we're afraid or unsure. In the beginning of the season, the smaller kids are a little timid to do live tackle drills against the bigger kids. By halfway through the season, they, know they no longer think size matters and they are shoulder tackling during the games with proper form, blocking and executing drive for five on the line without fear, and even if their opponent is bigger and exuberating self-confidence, they may not have when they first walked on the field. We coach through positive reinforcement and encourage our kids to try and try again. We believe modeling courage builds confidence and the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. The next element is listening and learning. Listening and learning is one of the focuses beginning the first day of practice. Just like school, we teach them that their ears are for listening. We listen to learn. Our equipment, such as football helmets, have holes in them so we can hear when we're playing and practicing. We can't listen and learn if we are talking or fooling around at the same time. Part of our responsibility as a football player is to listen and learn how to play the game so we can function as a team and all get better together. One of our drills is to listen and learn about our equipment. Equipment drills are explaining what each piece of equipment is for, why it's necessary, and how our equipment keeps us safe. This includes a coach's whistle. When the coach blows the whistle, it's time to stop, listen, and learn. For our coaches, this also means listening to our kids parents, and football community alike, and coming together as one force to encourage and build foundations for a strong generation and community. Family, the second Allen Bulldogs. Many, if all of the fundamentals of football, are not just for on the field, they are valuable life lessons. We teach our family is the strongest and most important thing. This includes our home family, school family, as well as our football family. Our kids earn the right to play football by being a functional part of the family, doing chores, learning lessons at home, doing their homework, being respectful, and using their manners such as please, thank you, I'm sorry, and being kind. It is helping our kids use their words, work out their frustrations, talk about their feelings, be disciplined, and respecting themselves, parents, teachers, coaches, and other football family parents. They chant family is everything for not only those that come, stay, and watch practice, but for the extended family that come and support our kids on game day. Commitment and dedication, D in football. Bulldogs. I can't say enough about our players parents, coaches, and support staff. The parents are committed to their kids every practice and every game. They volunteer their time to line the field at home games, bring fruit for the kids at halftime, and be an active participant in the football family we are creating. The players are committed to listen and learn, be respectful, practice hard, and try 100% for each and every drill, skill, at each and every practice each and every week. Their reward for showing up to play, practicing hard, being disciplined at school, home and on the field, following the rules and listening and learning the fundamentals of football, they get to play in a game against another team and chant, hard work pays off. These kids continue to practice through their bye week and even played an unscheduled game as practice. They are truly dedicated to the game and to quote my son who had no idea football was only a seasonal sport, Mommy, I wish we could play football all year long. The O in teamwork. We focus on the team as a whole. Every player needs to perfect their skills. Every position has a job to do. Together we function as a team 
and together we move down the field. We do not talk about the score, do not use the words win or lose. We concentrate on learning, working together as a team on and off the field, that we played a good game, we showed good sportsmanship, we were respectful to our officials and opponents, and that teamwork pays off. Our official huddle break. I'm very proud of our coaching staff and families for also functioning as a cohesive team. We have the youngest kids and they do a phenomenal job to do their part to support, encourage, and be a positive influence to the children. The G in integrity. Our coaches teach and coach with integrity. They lead by example, exemplifying good character, kindness, being helpful to each other, providing emotional support, showing good sportsmanship, acting professional and respectful at all times to players, families, opponents, and officials. We do not encourage dishonesty or cheating at home, school, or at football. We teach our players that results aren't the criteria or measurement of success. It's the effort put forth that's most important. The try. And our chant, if at first we don't succeed, try and try again. The S in respect is the last letter in Bulldogs. We spent a lot of time on what respect means. Being a good listener, being on time, what the, missile, what the whistle means when the coach blows it, taking a knee, when and why, respecting parents, coaches, officials, and our opponents. We ask parents to watch with their kids and respect campaign and talk about it at home and set consequences for disrespect. We practice respect through posture. We establish consequences for their disrespect, whether it's taking a lap or sitting out during a relay race at the end of the last practice of the week. Kids need boundaries and they need to know what they are and what the consequences are of breaking them. They walk onto the field as a team. They pay their respects to the other team together. And we include the cheerleaders showing good sportsmanship, they cheer for their teammates during the game, and they pay attention to their coaches, officials, team moms, and parents and family alike. Excellence is our last element. To our coaching staff and our tiny mites, excellence is individual to every player. Excellence is the best that each child can be. They understand that every play, every practice, Every game, every step is an opportunity on the field to get better. Excellence is about the entire process, about all the goals and values we instill all season. Much different than success, which is only about the outcome. Next year will be my husband's first year as head coach of the old Rochester Bulldog Tiny Mite team. We will institute all of the same practices we've developed and listed here but we will also add a few additional things. We are instituting a new program for excellence. The goal of the season will be for each player to earn, at their individual level, a letter for each value and element we spoke about above. And at the end of the year, they will have all the letters to spell Bulldogs. This will be our excellence award. We feel that through process and performance, individual outcomes and success, will lead to excellence as an individual and as a team. There are magic goals set that are measurable, agreed, graded, inspiring, and controllable, as well as family, friendship, and teamwork goals set for each age and individual, and we meet the child where they are while setting realistic expectations for them in the game they are learning. We will award letters that the kids can earn and wear on their practice jerseys for exemplifying our core values, commitment, integrity, courage, respect, excellence, teamwork, family, and brotherhood. And we'll spell out Bulldogs. These kids will work towards understanding what each of these values means and practice them daily on and off the football field. Players can be nominated at any practice by a family member, coach, 
or other teammate, and the letters will be awarded weekly after each game. The B from Brotherhood, the U from Courage, the L from Listening and Learning, the L in Family, the D from Dedication and Commitment, the O from Teamwork, the G from Integrity, and the S from Respect. These spell Bulldogs. We'll start a Tiny Mite football blog documenting my experience with this team, our players, their families, and the values we're working on, goals we are setting, and how the kids react to them as a metric of excellence. I think this could prove very interesting and a great learning tool for the next coaching staff that comes in as we move through the leveling of the game. I wouldn't change this age for the world, but at times, it can be like herding cats. Another section is skills and focus. We will identify a key value with skills that work on practicing that value. These will be posted on both our Facebook page and our blog for all parents to see. We will continue to acknowledge our four captains of the week for all practices in their respective game. The goal of this is to encourage the kids to be a leader, encourage teamwork, practice listening and learning, be a positive role model, and member of their families. We will continue to use a slogan to instill the value we are practicing that week and use it to cheer on the sidelines for teammates during the game. We'll focus on learning the core values through skills, fundamentals, and personal development that make us all better. Lastly, why are we applying for this award? Although our children deserve it, our families and coaches love the game and utilize the fundamentals of football to create a better community, there's another reason. We need proper equipment for our little guys. This is the hardest level. Kids vary so much in size, weight, and ability. Our equipment is too big and outdated. We need new and improved helmets to keep our little safe. We need appropriate sized pads for their little bodies. We want to institute unconventional training aids to build relationships and team building exercises. We're practicing with vehicle headlights as we don't have access to lighting at our field. We're instilling virtues and values for lifelong lessons through this game called football. We are making a difference. We want to make practice fun while teaching appropriate skills so we can minimize collisions, saving physical contact for one or two times a week, and we need proper equipment. We're trying to build a very successful feeder program for our school district, and this age is truly teaching fundamentals necessary for a successful program. They need to learn how to play football, proper technique from the beginning, and develop all the skills necessary to proudly exemplify what football really means. Please help us help our team. We appreciate your time and your commitment to the game. Thank you.